This is a requested video from page 128, first day, 2012. So if you want to follow along with me, please feel free to do so. So we're going to be talking about twins and how twins form. Obviously, there are two kinds of twins, monozygotic twins and dizygotic twins. Monozygotic twins means that it comes from the same zygote. If the same zygote starts getting separated and growing separately, then we have monozygotic twins. Dizygotic twins means that they are coming from two different eggs which were fertilized separately but they ended up together because they ended up in the same time frame and they grow separately but at the same time frame. So in that case we have dizygotic twins. I'm going to be talking about monozygotic twins first. So whenever we are talking about monozygotic twins we have to understand time frames is very very important okay so first there is um, you know day at day zero what happens at day zero we have fertilization at day two we have two cell stage two for two at day four we have marula at day five to five to six we have blastocyst okay and by day six we are going to have implantation we all know this time frame but this time frame is very very important you know what I'm gonna add some more days here just for my sake of uh, explaining twinning okay I'm just gonna add these numbers here okay so let's say we're talking about the first four days what if the zygote okay starts separating in the first four days between zero to morula from fertilization to morula if our cells if our zygote starts separating at this stage okay one thing is going to happen if the zygote starts separating from day four to day eight okay the next four days pretty much we're gonna have something else and if our zygote starts separating in the next following next four days we're gonna have something else and if they try to separate here we're gonna have something else so we're gonna so we have to remember those four chunks of dates very very important okay so let's talk about the first thing first what if the separation happens at this stage at this stage if the separation happens the twins that we get they're going to be dichorionic and diamniotic twins what does that mean what does dichorion diamnion means that means there is two chorion and there's two amnion let's see if we can draw this so let's say this is you know our baby okay and I'm going to draw two layers okay so this is going to be one this is going to be the other one now the outside layer is called chorion the inside layer is called amnion and obviously the amnion is filled with amniotic fluid and inside that we have our little baby okay so you can see that this layer the pink one would be our chorion the blue one would be our amnion and now we can clearly see that we have dichorion diamnion if the fertilization happens between zero to four days now one more thing I want to mention this is trivial not very very high yield but still we have to know that either these twins can share one placenta okay or they can have separate placenta okay it depends so this is what happens when we have uh, the separation between zero to four days what if the separation happens between four to eight days now things are quite simple right if the separation happens between zero to eight days then the outer layer is going to be one the inner layer 
is going to be 2. That means I'm going to erase the chorion here, the separation of the chorion, because that's not how it is anymore. And we're going to have monochorionic and diamniotic. So now this begs the question, what if the separation happened at this stage, from 8 to 12 days stage? What are we going to have? In that case, yes, you guessed it right, it's going to be monochorion and monoamnion. Okay, so we're going to have one chorion and one amnion. Okay, so what about day 13? What if what if the cleavage happens beyond day 13? That's when our babies are not going to be separated like that. You know, it was too close for comfort. The cleavage was too close for comfort and we're going to have babies stuck together. Hence, we have conjoined twins. Okay? If it is beyond 13 days. And the reason this happens is because right after day 12 around here we're going to have formation of chorion and amnion okay and if the separation happens beyond this point then they're supposed to be kind of stuck together right because they have one chorion one amnion and they couldn't really separate where before the cells separated so beyond uh, the very beginning that um, they could have separate chorion and separate amnion when the cells came at this stage. So that is my interpretation of uh, monozygotic twins. So the same thing is going to apply for dizygotic twins and there is no really separation happening, right? It's just two cells, two zygotes coming together to kind of, uh, you know, they grow together, right? So there is no um, mo you know, they're always going to be dichorion, diamnion because the cells have their own chorion, they have their own amnion, and there is no point where they will have the same chorion, same amnion, or they have to share it. They're two different uh, cells and they grow very, very differently from each other, right? You know, there is no, there is no sharing. So, nothing you know, it's always going to be dichorion, diamnion. There is no point where they would have to share the chorion or to share the amnion. So for dizygotic twins, dichorion, diamnion throughout. Very, very easy to uh, remember. But it's only the monozygotic twins that you have to understand that at the very beginning they're going to have dichorion, diamnion. Then the outer layer is going to be um, separated. You can understand, you can remember that because the A is, you know, Bef a comes before C and A is more inside than C. So A will uh, remain intact where C is going to be affected. The chorion is going to be affected. And um, we are going to have one amnion and two chorions. So monoamniotic dichorionic is going to happen at this stage. At this stage, we are going to have uh, monochorion, monoamnion because it's so close to forming the uh, amnion and the, and the chorion. And beyond day 13, we're going to have conjoined twins because they, in that case, they have, to, they have to share the chorion and they have to share the amnion, which makes them kind of stick together and we have the conjoined twins.